It's time for a blast from the past. There are some songs that will never disappear from the cultural zeitgeist. I'm sure Hey Jude will be played forever. Hey Jude. And I think it's literally illegal to have a wedding and not play Shout. Oh, that's so much fun. Whether they're undeniably fantastic or occurred at the perfect place and time, these songs will never be forgotten. But then there's the other side of the coin. Songs that were massive hits but have been largely lost to the sands of time. And that's the group we're looking at today. As the 1950s get farther and farther away, remember everyone, 1950 wasn't just 50 years ago anymore. More and more fantastic songs that people loved are being relevant relegated to the history books, which is unfortunate because some of these absolutely rock. So let's revive them today. I'm Nostalgic Nick for Do You Remember? If you love our swingin' playlist, please hit that thumbs up button for us, and subscribe to the channel for even more throwbacks. But for now, drum roll please! Okay, okay, thank you. Let's remember some hits. Maybelline, Chuck Berry. Oh, Maybelline! Why can't you eat it? When you think of legendary rock and roll pioneer Chuck Berry, the first two songs that spring to mind are his classics Johnny B. Good and Roll Over Beethoven. But it was 1955's Maybelline that first shot Berry to stardom and helped create rock music as we know it. With its raucous guitar riffs and classic rock subject of fast cars and teenage heartbreak, Maybelline was universally loved. In fact, it was one of the first songs that was a hit on all three of the rhythm and blues, country and western, and pop charts. While it may not get as much airplay as some of Barry's other hits these days, Maybelline might have had the biggest impact on the emerging genre of rock. Barry's guitar playing on this song is so influential that Rolling Stone magazine simply states, quote, rock and roll guitar starts here. Everyone from Clapton to Cobain certainly owes Chuck Berry a big ol' thank you for Maybelline. Walking After Midnight, Patsy Cline. I go out walking after midnight. Anyone who has experienced the loneliness and dejection of heartbreak can relate to the mournful lyrics of Patsy Cline's 1957 single, Walking After Midnight. Originally written for pop singer Kay Starr, she rejected it, and the song sat unused on the shelf for three years. Cline was also initially hesitant to release the song. It wasn't until after a performance on Arthur Godfrey's Talent Scouts, in which the audience reaction broke the in-house applause meter, that she rushed to put the single out. Walking After Midnight blends blues and country to great effect, beautifully painting a portrait of a spurned lover adrift in the world. And audiences loved it. The song went to number two on the country charts and made Patsy Cline a star. While she may be better known for her 1960s hits like Crazy, Walking After Midnight might best distill Cline's unique combination of pop, blues, jazz, and country down to its pure essence. That'll be the day, Buddy Holly. I thought that'll be the day when I die. The world almost didn't get to experience the awesomeness that is Buddy Holly's first hit song. Holly's record label was unhappy with the performance of Holly's previous singles and refused to release it. So Buddy formed a new band, The Crickets, signed to a new record label, and the rest is history. That'll Be The Day was among the first wave of massive rock and roll hits to sweep the nation. It shot to number one on the charts, and Holly and The Crickets are credited with popularizing the standard rock lineup of two guitarists, one bass player, one drummer. Unfortunately for all of us, That'll Be The Day ended up being one of the last recordings released by Holly, as he tragically died in a plane crash in 1959, synonymous with the day the music died. The influence of That'll Be The Day didn't die with him though. A cover of the song was the first thing ever recorded by the Quarrymen, a group that would evolve into a little known band named The Beatles. Cherry Pink and Apple Blossom White, Perez Prado. A 
wave of mambo fever swept the nation in the 1950s, and the man in the eye of the storm was Cuban band leader Perez Prado. America had gotten its first taste of Perez's Latin flair when he released Mambo No. 5 in 1950. <laughs> But the craze didn't reach its peak until the release of 1955's Cherry Pink and Apple Blossom White. This song, an up-tempo, irresistibly catchy instrumental, flew up the charts, staying at number one for 10 weeks and selling a million copies. Perez recorded Cherry Pink and Apple Blossom White for the film Underwater, with Jane Russell famously dancing to the song. Which makes perfect sense, because who hears the trumpet and doesn't start shaking their hips? Unfortunately, the popularity of the mambo nosedived with the end of the 50s, and today Prado's gym isn't heard nearly enough. But if you ever want a sure way to get a party started, throw cherry pink on and people will be grooving in no time. Whole lot of shaking going on. Jerry Lee Lewis. Lewis got his hands on the song Whole Lotta Shakin' Going On, an R&B song about dancing. He then added his trademark propulsive piano, suggestive spoken asides, and turned the speed up to about a billion. And voila, a rock and roll classic about, um, adult dancing. And this song was an instant hit, and the world was introduced to The Killer. Although he's remembered more today for Great Balls of Fire. In my mind, this world is fine. Great balls of fire. It was this tune that had been described as the quintessential rockabilly anthem that truly established Lewis's greatness. And Jerry Lee Lewis is still rocking out today. You should check out our rundown on some legendary rockers still going at it even after turning 80. Man, I just want to make it to 65. You send me Sam Cooke. Darling, you send me. Sam Cooke basically invented soul music and paved the way for greats like Aretha Franklin and Marvin Gaye to follow in his footsteps. And it all began with You Send Me, Cooke's first single, a love song that introduced the public to Cooke's almost impossibly smooth singing voice, like velvet gliding across a baby's bare bottom. Yeah, I said it. And the public loved it. You Send Me shot to number one on the R&B charts. However, record companies were skeptical that a black artist could have crossover appeal, and in a move typical of the times, had a white singer, Teresa Brewer, record a version aimed at the pop chart. I know you send me aka white people. But in a slap to the face of racists everywhere, Cook's version also went to number one on the pop charts, significantly outperforming Brewer's version. Overnight, Cook became a massive star, beloved by everyone, white, black, old, young, and the godfather of soul was born. Rocket 88, Jackie Brenston and his Delta Cats. You women have heard of jalopies, you've heard the noise they make, but let me reintroduce my new Rocket 88. Well, aside from being an outstanding song in its own right, Rocket 88 is acknowledged as the first rock song recorded ever. Now let's let that sink in. Credited to Jackie Brenston and his Delta Cats, who were actually Ike Turner and his Kings of Rhythm. Rocket 88 merged jump blues and up-tempo swing. The song also features one of the first known recordings of a distorted guitar. The band's bass amp had been damaged, and producer Sam Phillips filled it with newspaper in an attempt to fix it. It didn't work, but the resulting fuzz sound was kept and the rest is history. Ike Turner would go on to have great success working with wife Tina in the 60s and 70s, but people forget he got his start by basically inventing rock music. Whew, I'm jazzed. Are you jazzed? I mean, those are just some awesome songs from the 50s. Which of these great songs is your personal favorite? What forgotten 50s hit did we forget? Tell me in the comments below. We want to hear from you. And if you don't mind, give us a big thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. But we're signing off for now from all of us here at Do You Remember. Thanks so much for watching.